the crispness. I think winter's in the air. And then people want to stay in bed. But you guys are here. You're the winners. You're the victors. You're the ones who press through. Father, we thank you for this morning. Father, it's all about you. We just place our lives into your care and we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us that is consistent and unconditional. It's present. And Lord, we open our hearts to you this morning. We lay aside the cares of this week, this month, even this year. And Father, we just welcome you into this time and this space. As we say, Lord, we want to worship you because you are worthy of our worship. We thank you, God, that you are deeply involved in our lives. You care for us so deeply. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your care and your love. And this morning, we want to bless you. You bless us so much. Times we don't even know it, but this morning, we want to bless you. Amen, church. Let's worship the King this morning. Hallelujah.
thank you for victory this morning. Thank you, Lord. Great is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. strongholds are being pulled down. You know, we cast out devils, but we pull down strongholds. It means we've got to align our thoughts to the Word of God. And He, he said a grain of mu the mustard seed grain size faith can move a mountain. You don't need to do much, but He does it all. Hallelujah. So thank you this morning, Lord. still be
still what you do We are here for you Come and do what you do We are here for you Come and do what you do
Like a voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing, sing in glory, 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 sing in glory. say holy, 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 holy is the Lord God almighty who was and is and is to come. We sing holy. You God are holy. And we thank you Lord that you come down and you meet us where we're at. Won't you refresh us, Jesus? Won't you refresh us? Sing in holy, holy, holy.
you to just huddle together and just we're going to sing it a little bit more because I feel that there's something God is doing here there's nothing more precious than the comfort of the most high God and we get comforted by comforting each other and so I really think it's important that if your family huddle together even if you have to come out and and you have to get into an open space. But it's so important that we, we experience the comfort. Thank you. 
here your DNA is being aligned the enemy has 
try to get in and he's tried to pull you this way and that way and today that plumb line has dropped and now you need to align your mind and your mouth with the word of God and when your body wants to pull out and it wants to say it didn't happen you say it is written by his stripes I was healed Thank you so much, Father. Thank you that you love us so much. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. In the presence of the Lord, there is freedom. In the presence of the Lord, there is healing. There is joy, there's peace, there's comfort, there's everything. And Lord, we thank you that you never, ever leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Sure. Yeah, so Glenn just saw a vision of, or a scripture that, was, that came to her where the Lord said, Father, here am I with the children you gave me. And he's, he had his arms around us. Is that how it was? Glenn, where's Glenn sitting? Oh, right at the back. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God loves you. In case you didn't know that, God loves you. Great to see you all here this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody here for the first time? Can you just wave at me if you're here for the first time? Alex, hallelujah. The first time today. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to have everybody here this morning. If, uh, if you're online, good morning. I'm hoping that all the folk that uh, you all had a word for that you were listening and uh, you received the word in the name of Jesus Christ. And then I um, want to welcome all you wonderful people in the building. And I want to say thank you for actually making it this morning. You know, I know you had to get up in a cold, a fairly cold day. Well, it's only just starting to get cold. So uh, get used to it. And then um, I just want to say to the guys online, please don't forget we're taking communion later on. So please have your bread and your wine or your grape juice ready. And then those who had a birthday in the last week, is there anybody in the building who had a birthday? 
Nalisa, your birthday, I thought it's two, isn't it on Tuesday? Last Tuesday. I thought it was next Tuesday. Happy birthday. I'm sorry, my dear. I've got your birthday as a 16th. 16th of April. Is it the 9th of April? Oh, yeah. Two chocolates for Nalisa for me not wishing you happy birthday even on our online on our prayer. Oh, that is just disgusting. Happy birthday, my dear. Okay, and then uh, I know it's Mike's 21st today. Happy birthday, Mike, who is not here because he had a party last night. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then uh, it was Bridget, Jane, Seth, Cheryl, Davina, Belinda, and Eric's birthday. And it's uh, so, yeah, there's quite a number of birthdays that was this week. And then um, anybody else other than Elisa have a birthday in the last week? Well, I did say to Billy... Happy birthday for last week. He was obviously taking his uh, birthday weekend off. And hopefully he took the chocolate. And Father, I just want to pray blessing over our birthday children. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Father God, for an outpouring of your spirit. I want to thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy and your loving kindness. And every good thing to be part of what we're supposed to be enjoying. And the birthday kids, Lord, may they know that you, they were born for such a time as this. They were born for greatness. They were born to be blessed and to be a blessing. And so I release that over Nalisa, over Billy, over Michael, Lord, over all of the children of God, over Davina, Lord, we just release blessing and favor in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for your outpouring of your Spirit over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a couple of announcements. First of all, we're very excited to be starting a new ministry in H2O. And I've asked Mandy to lead what we're calling Altar Call Discipleship. And so uh, Mandy's going to start doing that. And what I've asked her to do is to talk to some of you about joining her team and uh, being trained to help people to grow up in God and become all that they're meant to be. So I, I really want to encourage you, if she comes and speaks to you, listen to what she's got to say and listen to what the Lord's got to say because I believe what's happening is she's really trusting that the Lord is going to give her the people that He wants to be on that team. And so, yeah, so amen. My wife is just giving me the amen and I thought maybe she was telling me off, you know, like... Hallelujah. Preach it, brother. So then as I, <coughs> excuse me, as I mentioned last week, we're also going to be having a citywide mission coming up in September from the 5th to the 15th. And um, we're trusting God for many souls during that time. And because of that mission, they are having a, an event called the School of Evangelism starting on the 26th of April, going to the 5th of May. It's 10 days solid except for the Sunday and uh, for 8 to 5 or so. Q will be representing us, Whoa. and uh, we, we, we are very excited about Q doing, uh, doing it. And if there's anybody else who wants to do it, you really believe God's saying to you do it, especially if you're called to be an evangelist, then it's great. It's an opportunity for you to be trained by full-time evangelists who have been doing this for years. And so uh, I want to encourage you, come and speak to me. It either is a cost involved, but we as a church will sponsor those of you that come from our church to go and do the course. And then um, you can let me know after the service or let the, the church know during the week. But this week is probably the end of that. And then we'll be getting together for prayer with the police um, and the other churches on Wednesday afternoon at 1 o'clock at Pine Slopes Check outside Pine Slopes Checkers. Uh, we're going to be praying. We go and pray for crime hotspots for those of you that don't normally hear what I say on a Sunday. And uh, so this hotspot is going to be, they, they've been having issues. I'm not sure if they're still having issues, but Pine Slopes was the place they were having issues. And so we're going to go and pray against crime in Jesus' name. And then on Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 8.30, we are having soaking here. And so... Um, Hallelujah. They, you know, it's not because I'm a good comedian that they're laughing. 
They're just having a good time in God. Right, so I'm going to carry on as if nothing's happening. Have you, ha, how many of you have ever been in a Rodney Hard Brown meeting? You'll be from, uh, amazed. He speaks, he's the most serious guy, and he walks like this, and he says, and Jesus did. Jesus came to the people. But in the congregation, people are howling with laughter. And they are just carrying, and he's just going, and Jesus touched the, the lepers, and they were cleansed. And these people, <laughs> they find it so funny. I mean, if somebody is not a church going person, or somebody is not a person who understands the Spirit, it's just like they, they think everything's gone crazy. But God just showing uh, that he's big and more powerful than any of us, and God can do what he likes. And what we found amazing in those Rodney meetings was the people that laughed the loudest and acted the most ridiculous were the cynics. They were the guys who came there to come and actually almost mock and ridicule and, and like look at them and think there's nothing, and then the next thing they get touched, and they get really blown away by what God is doing. And so, um, also, Alex Q will be taking uh, an, a team to Alex on Saturday, this coming Saturday. If you want to go with, please either speak to Q or get hold of us so that you can get more details. And let's do this together. Let's say this together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm forever changed. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I'm forever changed. Forever and ever and ever. I'm forever changed in Jesus' name. And if you believe it, say, Hamu! Which means, so be it. I agree. So this is the second part of our new series, Get Real. If you're not real, get real. And the title of our message is Think Eternally. You know, it's one of the most important things is for a believer to think eternally and not just for this little short life that you're living. You know, if you entered a race thinking it's a 400 meter sprint, You've been told you got to enter the race and you're a very good sprinter and you enter the 400 meter sprint and then 200 meters in, you're gunning it with all your heart. You discover it's a 10. Somebody says, why are you running so fast? This is a 10 kilometer steeplechase. How many of you know what a steeplechase is? Okay, only three of you. Okay, so I better explain. But anyway, steeplechase is one of those races. The, the horses do it, but also humans do it. A race where you have dips and like hedges. It's not just the hurdles, but it's like jumping over a hedge. Jump, and then there's a, you know, like a water um, pool behind the hedge. How many of you have seen horses racing those races? How many of you have seen people running, racing those races? Well, that's a, t a steeplechase. So can you imagine you're running with all your heart for the t first 200 meters, but you can't understand why there's a hedge in the way. What happened? And some guy says, why are you running so fast? You've still got another 9.8 kilometers to run. Are you going to manage it? And I can imagine that would just freak you out. How many of you would be freaked out if you were running a thinking you're going to run a 400 meter race, you definitely aren't going to make the 10 Ks you're probably thinking. If you're a boxer, how many box here? How many understand boxing? Okay, also only a few of you. Well, you know, when you box, if you're a boxer, you, you're allowed to hit with your two fists. Your feet are there to dance around and to keep you on, the, on your toes. But your feet, that's all it's being used for. And so imagine you think you're a, bo you're a boxer and somebody says, I've got a great fight for you. It's going to be in Madison Square Gardens. It's like the biggest thing out. There's going to be thousands and thousands of people. And I'm inviting you to fight. How many of you ever saw the Rocky movies? You know, Rocky was a nobody and they chose him and said, you come and, and uh, let's see what you can do against the champion. And he phenomenally beats the champion. But now imagine you get invited to fight this fight. Fight, and when you arrive, you find out it's not a boxing fight. It's an MMA cage fight. How many of you would be quite devastated to hear that news? Suddenly, just for the record, for those of you who don't understand that, 
MMA uses everything. They don't even use proper boxing gloves. They use just something over their knuckles. They don't, most of them don't wear shoes. I don't know if that's on purpose or if, if they're not allowed to wear shoes. But they barefoot. They fight. They're allowed to use their knees. They're allowed to use their, their kicks. They're allowed to um, wrestle. They can, do, they can use jiu-jitsu. They can use whatever they want to include box. And now you come there as a, a boxer. You don't stand a chance unless that, the, the MMA guy says, I'll be decent and I'll only use my fists. But, uh, so if you can understand that, I think you'll be devastated. So knowing what fa fight we're going into, knowing what race we're going into is exceptionally important if we want to finish strong. If that boxer was told six months in advance, listen, I want to tell you, you're going to be in an MMA fight. Learn all you can about wrestling. Learn all you can about kickboxing. Learn everything you can about all of that stuff. There may be a much better chance that he'd be a happy chappy on that day. But if he came in just expecting to box, he'd be in trouble. If you came into that race expecting to run 400 meters and you end up having to run 10 kilometers steeplechase, you need to know what you're going into so that you go into it excited, ignited, and delighted. So last week when we st started the series, I asked the Lord what He wanted to say, and I'm going to read it again, what I believe the Lord said. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. I have plans for you that only you can achieve, and you can only achieve them with me at the helm. Don't waste your time trying to be something you're not. You were made for me, by me, and through me. I am your Redeemer, your Savior, your Helper, and your best friend. You could search your whole life and find no one that loves you like I do. It hurts to watch you struggle. Surrender to me. Give your life to me and enjoy a peace that passes understanding and an eternal joy. I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask, think or even imagine. And I want to bless you. I want to reveal my greatness to you and through you. All I require is that you believe and trust in me. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and finisher of your faith. Walk in step with me and be assured of victory. You know, so many, too many believers are not coping with the battles life is throwing at them. And part of the problem is that you weren't expecting a battle. Just like people who run into that boxing fight and dis discover it's not the battle they were expecting. And so many of us get saved thinking, the battle's over! Hallelujah! But one of the most important factors for you and me to remember as believers is we're not like other humans. You are a child of the Most High God. And because of that, you're swimming upstream from now on. This is quite a, a hectic thing. I should have maybe said it at the altar call and other pe pastors and preachers should have said, you know, I want to tell you, I'm going to invite you to swim upstream with the rest of us. But let's go to 1 John 5, 19 to see why I say we are swimming upstream. If you're reading your Bible, it's right near the back of the Bible. If you're going back from the back, Revelation, Jude 3, 2 and 1 John. 1 John 5, verse 19. And it says, <clears throat> we know that we're of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So what was happening is the wicked one is like a raging torrent going south. And you are being thrown in that same torrent. This is what we, our lives were like and it was like a real mess. And then somebody somehow gets to you and says, there's a way out of the torrent. You've got to give your heart to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus and you won't be stuck under the sway of the wicked one. You say, yes, I'd like that. And, and he gives you his life. And the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I know that when he gives us his life, he enables us, he empowers us to swim upstream. It's not, it's, not a, it's not impossible because God's going to help you. But if you don't understand that and you think now, well, this is going to be easy. I'm just going to sail along. 
No, the sailing along people are going all the way south. They're going south and God wants you to go north. He wants you to go to heaven. He doesn't want you to go down. And so, and so God says, just start swimming. It may get tough, but I want to tell you, you're not under the sway of the wicked one anymore. Uh, first of all, he takes you from under the water and under that whole turbulence and all that kind of stuff. And he puts you on the top. And then he says, now swim upstream. And I'm going to give you the power to do so. And don't get freaked out about the fact that it's not easy. You know, I'm, I, I love swimming. And the last time we went to Mauritius, well, in fact, every time we've gone to Mauritius, for those of you that have been to Mauritius, a lot of Mauritius, the, the current is sideways, a hectic current. Um, like, you can't believe the current is so strong. You know, if you jump in the water, yeah, just put your towel down 200 meters south, and in about two seconds, you'll be at your towel. And then you, you get out of the water and you walk back up to the top and you do that. Anyway, because I was swimming, I was swimming a lot. And I was probably swimming about, yeah, a few k's every day. And so there I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll just swim upstream. You know, I'll swim against the current. And I practically stood still. It took me to swim a kilometer. It took about an hour. I would just swim, but I wasn't concerned. I wasn't worried about it. I wasn't in a race. I was just enjoying the swimming. And so I would just swim in one kind of slowly, slowly, I move a meter up, slowly, slowly, I move a meter up. Now, Christianity is a bit like that. You may think you're going backwards. Well, that's why Christians, when Christians get slack, they don't have to get hectically sinful to backslide. You just have to stop. And you're all the way back to where you started. In fact, worse. And, um, and so in the same way, if we want to win in a situation like we're in, you need to be strong in the Lord. You need, to, you need to find your strength in God. That's why, you know, the, the word that we heard this morning is they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. We need to wait on the Lord. We need to just, just trust Him. Just be in His presence. He fills you. He strengthens you. He empowers you. He fills you with His Spirit afresh. It's not a one-off thing of let me get saved and now it's up to me to make it happen. No, it's, it's let me get saved and spend time in God. And as I spend time in God, th those strengths, also those, those strokes that I was taking, you know what, you get stronger and stronger. You, get, you think, oh, what, what's the use of this? Well, when you get out of the water and you notice your lats are looking like this instead of like that, and uh, everything's changed because you've been spending time exercising. Now, in the same way in the Spirit, this happens to us. In the Spirit, we get stronger and stronger. We become fearless. We, things that, that used to bug us don't bug us anymore. We change. We grow. Things happen, and what's very important for you and me is to think eternally. We're not just here for 70, 80, 90, 100 years, and then it's the end. No, we are here and then the beginning. We are actually, this is just a little process. This could be likened to the womb of a woman, what we are living in right now, this earth. Is, could be likened to what a baby experiences in the womb. And one day, the baby is too big for the womb. And it, leave, it has to leave. And maybe there's little cells in the womb that go, Oh, it's so sad the baby had to leave. Oh, shame. It's not fair. It was doing so well in the womb. It was like, you know, just so, doing whatever it was doing, swimming around, doing its thing. If there were little cells that could think in the womb, which we don't know whether we've got it or not, they could have been crying now and saying, you know, this poor baby's gone now. 
But the truth is the baby hasn't gone. Well, the baby's left the womb, but the baby is in now in a new, a new exciting, adventurous world, a world where it's going to grow and discover amazing things. And so if you and I could see that and realize that earth is about growing up, when, when we're here on this planet, we're busy growing up in our womb state so that we can be released into heaven and discover a world that we never thought possible. I want to tell you that when you and I as believers die, it's not going to be sad. You are not going to be sad. You're going to get to heaven. You're going to think, man, I am so thrilled to be there. I'm so, so thrilled. And so you have to think eternally. And you have to understand that this body is here for a, only a short purpose and a short mission. We are here on a mission, first of all, to get to know God. That's the most important thing. To get to know Him, to get to love Him, to get to learn to obey Him, to get to learn to trust Him. That, that's the main reason that we come to this earth, is to get to know God. And so that when we arrive out of the womb into our heavenly place, it will go, Oh, Abba, Abba, it's me. And you'll know Him. You'll know who he is. There may be a whole bunch of shining people. You know, you look in Revelation. John says, I saw this. He was, looked like a man. And he had this and he was that. And he, I don't, he didn't say, I saw Jesus. He says, I, I saw this guy and I saw that guy. They were shining. They were this and that. You may get to heaven and look at a whole bunch of guys. If you don't know God, you may think, maybe that's God. He's shining big and bright. Oh, that guy, oh, he looks powerful. Maybe that's Jesus. No, but when you know Jesus, when you arrive in heaven, you just go, he can, there can be a whole bunch of shining people, but you'll see Jesus and you'll know him. You'll know him, not, not because you've known his face or his physical ability, appearance, but something happens when we spend time with God. We get to know him. And so when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, you were born again into his eternal kingdom. And it's so important. You are a child of God. You have a relationship with God. And that should be what forges your identity. You are not just an architect, not just an engineer, not just a housewife, whatever it is. You are a child, a daughter or a son of the Most High God. You are here as an ambassador. You are here to represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are a very, very special person. And, and if you knew that, you wouldn't allow the things that the enemy throws at other people to offend you and to hurt you and to make you hopeless. So we read John chapter 1 verse 12 just to, to show you that you definitely are a child of God. It says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. If you receive Jesus, you have the right to be a child of God. That's what happened. You were not born of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. But, in fact, that's the next scripture, verse 13. If, you, if you've got it up there. It says, you were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You were born of God. You were born not not because you decided to do it. And whatever it is, God chose you. I want you to know you're in this room because God chose you. Amen. God chose you. I mean, how awesome is that? You know, I, I always used to think about when we were kids and played soccer in, sec in the break, the second break normally because it was the longer break. How many of you ever played sport during those times and you, you would, all the, the guys would go down to the soccer field and we'd quickly have to choose a side and you know, two of us main oaks would be the, the self-appointed captains. You know, you just, okay, I'm the captain of the game. And then I go, okay, Lee's in my team. And then the other guy goes, Robbie's in my team. And I go, John's in my team. And you know, that kind of thing. And, and we decide. And then there's always that one last guy. Who's, who's sort of standing like... And you just hope somebody's going to choose him for their team. 
And, and basically they have to choose him because he's standing over there. <laughs> but it's always, I always used to feel bad about that last guy that was chosen because he just had to be chosen. But I want to tell you something that God chose you. Jesus said in John chapter 15, he says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And I appointed you. And I anointed you. I ordained you to bring forth fruit. Fruit that will remain. Amen. And I want to tell you something. That's who you are. You are chosen by God. In fact, let's go to 1 Peter chapter. 1 Peter, if you were in John, it's the book just before John. Uh, that 1 John. So we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. One of my very first sermons that I preached, I preached at Boxburg High School. And I was asked to come and speak to the whole school, and I was speaking to the school. And in those days, they used to call Christians Jesus freaks. How many of you ever heard that term, Jesus freak? And so I said, you know, we were freaks, but now we're people. I wasn't a freak. I wasn't a, I'm not a Jesus freak. I'm a Jesus person, but I was a freak. According to the word, yeah, I was, it says, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I want to tell you, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You know, if you take, if you grab hold of this and you realize it, your, your life will be changed. I'm telling you now, you can encourage yourself. You can say, you know, the, the enemy could say, yeah, but look at this. You got that and you got this and you don't have this and you don't have that. But you can say, I am a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. In other words, I have connection with the Father. You know, the reason that certain religions say they, they give it up to the priest. And it started long ago. I mean, so many religions have that. Where the priest has a connection with the God that they serve. And so if you want something from that God, you've got to go to your priest. And you've got to say, will you ask your God to give me this and this and this? But the Bible says, hey guys, I want you to know you're a priest. Amen. You have connection with me. You have been chosen by me. So that you don't have to go and ask some other guy to go to me. You can ask me because I'm giving you the right. You're my son. You're my daughter. You are special. You are chosen. And this is the important thing. And I've called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. When you start understanding this, and that's why it's so important, I really believe, to spend time in the Word. You see, as believers, we have an ability to understand this Word like unbelievers don't understand. You know, an unbeliever will read this Bible maybe a thousand times and get nothing from it. A believer... If you sit down and you don't try and read it to get finished, but you say, Lord, I want you to shine your light. I want you to shine your light in my life. Show me. Talk to me. Show me what you're about. Help me, Lord, to understand you. Help me to understand me. As you read the word with that kind of mindset, you're going to find things in here that are going to just light up your life. Bow, bow, bow. You'll discover things about yourself that you never knew at any stage. And God is going to do amazing things because you are the people of God. You're a child of God and you've obtained mercy. Galatians 4. Let's go to Galatians. If you... Um, uh, it's 1 Corinthians. So it's Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians. So we Galatians chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. So, girls, in this case, you are a son. You're a son of God. Just like Jesus is a son of God, just like 
in certain, if I look at Ephesians, then guys, we're the bride of Christ. It always used to freak me out to think of myself as a bride. But, uh, you know, because I'm a very happy man. <laughs> and uh, so the thought of being a bride was like, mm, that doesn't go down well, you know. But anyway, I've got over it now. And so, girls, you can get over being called a son. Verse 6, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, Abba. You know, Yael grew up in a Jewish home, and so when I met her dad, it was, he, his name was Mickey, but everybody actually knew him as Abba, because it, it was their dad, and they used to call him Abba. So when, I think when... Uh, when they introduced their friends, they'd say, this is my Abba, and everybody would go, hi, Abba. <laughs> so everybody knew him as Abba, which just means dad. Yeah. So here you're saying, Abba, Father, <clears throat> my dad, you know, my dad. And, and that's such a big thing. It's not just like this, this father, this untouchable father that wants nothing to do with me. But it's a father who wants to be called dad. He wants to be called Abba. He wants, he wants you to know that you can come and sit on his lap and tell him anything you want to tell him. I want to tell you God knows everything about you. He knows the secret thoughts that you hope nobody will ever discover. He knows them. And he still loves you. It's quite amazing. It's such a blessing to know that he knows everything and he loves us in spite of everything. He loves us because he loves us. And verse 7, therefore you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. It's not about how you serve God. God is not looking for service. He's looking for children. He, the service will come. But that's not what gets you connected with the Father. What gets you connected? You think of Mary and Martha. Mary sits there to, to any of us watching that situation. We watch this, this one woman, and she's working so hard in the kitchen for, for the, this bunch of guys, Jesus and his disciples, and she's making sandwiches, and she's cooking a roast, and she's got all this, and she's just grafting, and you can see the sweat, and she's, she's getting so frustrated and freaked out because her little sister, the lazy good-for-nothing... He's just sitting, not even, not even offering to help. The sister's sitting there just looking at Jesus. And I can imagine every girl that looked at him probably was in love with him. <clears throat> just because the anointing on his life was so phenomenal. But she's just looking at him and every word that comes out of his mouth is, Wow, wow, wow. And Martha is going that lazy good for nothing little sister I will take her out when he's gone and then eventually she can't take it anymore she just comes out and says Jesus talk to this girl tell her to come and help me and Jesus says no no Martha you don't understand she's chosen the better thing spending time with me is better than making me samis just she's chosen that and God is saying the same to you and me I'd rather know you then have you do everything. Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, he says, people are going to come and say to him, but Jesus, I did miracles in your name. I prophesied in your name. I did all these things. And he'll say, but I don't know you. So there's that thing of knowing him as dad. Knowing him. There's a, a relationship, but the relationship, he's done everything to make the relationship as possible and as holy and as good as it can be. He's done everything. He's died for us. It's up to us to connect with Him. It's up to us to praise Him. You know, if you want to know, how do I please God? How do I? Start praising Him. Just tell Him what a wonderful God is. As, and start thanking Him. I mean, you know, the Bible says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. It's very important. In, in Psalm 100. I think it's in Psalm 100. It says, I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I'll enter his courts with praise. It's one of those psalms. Very close to 100 if it's not 100. I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I'll enter his courts with praise. When you come to the gate of Jesus shouting in the odds and telling him what a rotten God he is, then unfortunately he, he, you're not going to get very much further than the gate. But when you come and say, Jesus, 
Thank you so much for saving me. Man, my whole life has changed. I don't care how, what, let's say Jesus was moody, which he's not, but let's say he was moody and he was in a bum mood and it's like, and some guy knocks on the gate and says, Jesus, thank you so much. It's like, wow, tell him to come in. I want to hear what he's done. I was reading Joel Osteen's, uh, Joel Oste one of Joel Osteen's books and he was talking about having an encouragement file. He says, have an encouragement file. Anytime a person says something nice to you or writes you a nice letter, put it in a file. Remind yourself of what they say. You know, everything nice. Because when you're discouraged, when you're disappoint, disappointed, when life is not treating you well, you go to your encouragement file and you say, hey, but not everything is bad. This guy said that about me. That's quite nice. Oh, this guy said that about me. He says um, he was so excited when he first started ministering. One of the guys that he gymmed with, some guy that he knew from the gym, uh, sent him a message saying, um, Joel, I listened to your sermon this morning. And, uh, and he thought, wow, that's fantastic. He says, you don't stand a chance of staying in the ministry. <laughs> so the, he says, I was encouraged by the fact that he, he listened to my sermon. <laughs> But the second part he didn't enjoy. And then another little boy came to him, a little five-year-old boy. He said, Joel, I just love your stories. And he was feeling so good. And he says, but the rest of that stuff is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> so just when somebody gives you some half and half, take the first part, the nice part, and throw out the rest. God loves you, and I want you to know he's got a plan for you. And... Um, but you may be saying, you know, life should have been easier than this. You know, I thought it was going to be easier than this. If we're God's children, why can't he just fix everything? He's, you know, why doesn't he just make me perfect in a day? But growing up, unfortunately, if you grow up spiritually, it's very similar to growing up physically. Change is uncomfortable. When we grow up, you know, when you as a child, if you think about it as a little baby, you get away with everything. You tell your mom and dad what to do as a little toddler. Give me the food. Do this. Sit there. Do that. Everybody listens to you. It's the most phenomenal thing. I watch little kids, little toddlers and babies, and I think, how are they getting away with this? They are doing things that I would just give them a crack with every little, you know, I can't believe they're getting away with this. But then as they get older, suddenly they hear the word no. And it's like, what do you mean no? Suddenly the child starts suffering. Because it's like, if you come, I was the king. I had my whole, everybody listening to me. And now they, that, that person is telling me what to do. That person who calls me mother. No. I mean, she calls herself mother. Yeah. No, except, except in, in the Mershak household. In the Mershak household, they call their dad. Well, their dad calls them dad. And their mom calls them mom. <laughs> and then, okay, it's a Lebanese thing. So... <laughs> it's so funny. So the da her dad would go, Hey, dad. And her, and her brother would go, yeah, yeah, he also calls him dad, I guess. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So in that case, it can work like that. But generally speaking, we, you know, the mother is the mother. <clears throat> and so we learn in growing up that growing up can be uncomfortable. But it's good for us. Because I'll tell you what, if you are still acting like a baby or a toddler when you're in your 30s, you won't have one friend. You won't have anybody near you. You'll just, you'll probably be in prison because you would have caused so much trouble. And um, yeah, so let me carry on with that. Growth requires change, and change is for your benefit. And you know, I remember what is that saying? A change is as good as a holiday. So enjoy the change. And if you see, see it with the Spirit of God, the Lord allows us to get away with stuff. We tell God what we want initially as baby Christian. Hey, God, I want this. 
And like amazingly, God does it. And then those baby Christians look at some older Christian and who's not having the miracles they're having. And they look and think, you've just got no faith. If only you were like me. You know, I just say, God, I want... And it's just like, it's like, I get it all like this. You old religious people that don't have faith. You get nothing from God. You better build your faith. And then suddenly you go, God... And he doesn't do it. And it's like, hey, what happened? God, I, I spoke. Why haven't you listened to the click of my fingers? And God's going, I'm, I'm busy growing you. Yeah, that's right. I'm busy making you more yeah. like me. I'm busy getting to help you to know me. Yeah. I, I don't know if I want to know you. I just want to be able to tell you what to do and you must do it. And so many believers are in that boat and God's saying, hold back. I want to do something in your life that's going to be so phenomenal that in the years to come, you will be so thrilled that you grew, so thrilled that you've changed, so thrilled. And you won't even get offended by the young believers that, that tell you you've got no faith. Because you remember you were once one of those. And you'll just smile and you you know that knowing smile? I don't know if you ever saw that advert with a little boy and his, his dad. And I can't remember Toyota or Golf or something advert. And his, his, dad, said, uh, they were talk his dad said, what do you do at school? And he said, oh, we were talking about cars. And, and, um, and then this one little boy said, he's got this, his dad's got that car. And then I said, my dad's got this car. And the little boy said, oh, but my dad's car is better than yours. And, you'd, and his dad said, so what did you do? He says, I just smiled. <laughs> In other words, I knew my dad's car is better than your car. <laughs> and so sometimes as you grow, you just realize, man, I don't need to take offense. I'm, they're going to grow up. And don't even pray that God will make them grow up fast. You know, because that's what you want to do. You want to pray, God, stop their next prayer. You know, so that they really, <laughs> they grow up and stop judging everybody else. No, let God work in their time with them just as he wants to do. So let's go to Romans chapter 8. If you're in Galatians, go back. Corinthians, Romans. Chapter 8. <clears throat> and we're reading from verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, just like we saw earlier in Galatians. But what's very important here is you led by the Spirit. You see, there's something important about being led by the Spirit. You can't do this when you're still a baby because you are the leader. And so God has to get you to this place where you're now acting like a son of God, where you do what the Spirit of God says, when you're led by the Spirit, when He says, be still. Yeah. And you don't go, but you, but, yeah, but. No, 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 but. Be still. Yeah. I, I, it's, so, it's so amazing how growing up just has those things. God doesn't get freaked out if you are going, but, 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 but. He just... He sits down and he waits and he says, okay, are you ready now? And eventually, I mean, you go, bah, 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 and then you just sit, you cry, you do the whole thing, and then you just sit. I remember one day getting on God's case. I, I thought I was being clever. I started telling God just what I think of him. He, you know, he's, he's, he didn't come to the party for me like he should have. I've done everything for him and he's done nothing for me. And I'm not normally like that. And so I gave him stick. I thought, I've seen other people doing it. It seems to get them wonderful results. So I did it. And instead of getting results, I just got this terrible feeling like he'd left me. I sat for a whole day. With an empty, I sat. I didn't leave the place. I sat on my couch. I was terrified. I thought, God's left me. Do you know what happened? It changed everything. When he did show me his presence later that evening, I didn't care about what I hadn't got from him the night before. 
the morning before he left me. All I wanted was his presence. I, I, all those other things, those priorities were no longer a priority. I realized the one thing I have that nobody else has except other children of God. I've got God. I've got his presence. I, it's better than anything. And without it, I'm lost. I'm finished. I'm, f I'm afraid. I go back to uh, worse. Like I said, when you, you, know, when you backslide you, as a Christian, you don't just end up where you started. You end up far back. And, and that day was terrifying. I sat there. I didn't ever thought. It was just like I felt as empty as empty can be. Anyway, I realized it's not my call to get stroppy with God. Other people can do that if they want to do that. It's not the way I operate. And I don't, you know, God knows my heart. And thank God that he's just taught me how to really love life. I, I love life. I think I've always loved life. But even more so as a believer. And so, yeah, he says, <clears throat> you didn't receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. And I'm not going to carry on. I'm going to carry on next week. Uh, yeah, next week we're still busy with the series. The following week I've got this amazing speaker who's going to be speaking on the Passover because it is the Passover on the 28th of uh, April. And um, the, this amazing young Jewess uh, is going to be talking, namely my wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's going to be ministering the word. And, ex and, and uh, I don't know what she's going to be doing, but I know it's exciting. Because uh, I've, I've never listened to Al in all the sermons I've heard of her. I've never heard a sermon where I, didn't, I wasn't happy to be in the meeting. In fact, almost every meeting I cry when she preaches. And so <clears throat> I want to encourage you, if you are going to take a day off, don't make it on the 28th. Be here on the 28th. It's going to be exciting. So let's carry on. We're going to be taking communion in a minute, but I do want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you haven't done that yet. And uh, you know, that's so important. Like I said, the, this, this thing of having God in our lives, yes, maybe it is a tough one. Maybe we are going to have to swim upstream, but God is going to give you the grace to do so. And at the end of it all, you are going to be so glad you made the decision. And so if you're not sure, I can ask everybody just to close your eyes for a minute. If you're not sure that you are a child of God and that if you die today, you're not sure you're going to heaven. I want to give you the opportunity to, to make right with God. To give your heart to Him and allow Him to give His heart to you. And so if you'd like that, would you please just raise your hand so I can pray for you. Is there anybody in the room like that? Please raise your hand quickly. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe there's somebody online. I'm not sure. So we're going to pray a prayer. If you're not sure that you're a child of God, I want you to pray this prayer. In fact, everybody in, inside the house, if you'll pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving me so much that you gave your only son to die for me so that I can live forever. Thank you for raising him from the dead. So that I can know for sure. That my sins were taken care of. In full. And that if I confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. I will be saved. Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you're alive and I invite you into my heart. Come and sit on the throne of my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. Give me your Holy Spirit to help me, to strengthen me, to give me the power and the grace to swim upstream and to finish the race. Well, as a victor, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We're going to take communion now. 
And uh, so the ushers are going to get the communion ready. <clears throat> and I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. In case you think, why don't you read another scripture? I don't actually know why I don't, but I like this one. <laughs> I know there's lots of scripture that some people read a different scripture every week for communion. But uh, this is the one that really grabs me. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. <clears throat> Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. You know, when we eat and drink this, What's important for us is to really understand what Jesus is saying. He's saying, I paid the price in full for you. If you eat this bread in a worthy manner, it's, it's, you're actually saying, Jesus, I need you. I need your body to have been broken for me. I thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you for dying for me. I thank you for paying the price for me. I thank you, Lord, that it's not up to me to be righteous in my own self, but that I can trust in your righteousness. That's what worthy eating is. Understanding that we need Jesus. Understanding that we cannot live this Christian life in our own holiness and strength. It's all about Jesus. That's really what it's all about. He's saying, I want you to understand everything is about me. I've paid the price. I've paid the price in full. What is it that you're needing? You've got to see it. You've got to receive it through my broken body, not through how holy you are. Not how much you read your Bible, not how much you pray, not how much you give, not how much anything like that. What gets you uh, the blessing is the fact that I paid for it. And so when you eat this bread, you remember that I paid. I paid for everything. I paid for your forgiveness. I paid for your healing. I paid for your blessings, whatever they are. And as you focus on me, as you focus on Jesus, and you focus on, the, on what he did for you, you begin to, your faith gets built up and you realize if Jesus could die for me, how much more will he not give me that? How much more will he not bless me with that? In Romans chapter 8, it says, if God would give up his only son, how much will he, what would he withhold from you? Nothing. And so Jesus, as we eat this bread, we do it in remembrance of you. You said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for this cup of the new covenant. You said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, this is as good as us bringing a sacrifice as a Jewish person would bring a sacrifice to the priest. 
And that priest would burn that sacrifice. And we knew because we had given that sheep, that lamb, that cow, whatever it was, because we gave it in place of us, our, our sins were forgiven. We were acceptable to God again because of the sacrifice. And so, Jesus, we thank you that you gave your own body up and your own blood as a sacrifice for us so that we can live in eternal blessing and favor and forgiveness and grace. Lord, we can live as if we've never sinned because your blood has paid the price in full. Lord, right up to the day we die, your blood has paid in full. And so, Jesus, we thank you for your precious blood. Lord, we receive it now. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord for paying the price in our place. In Jesus' name. Amen. If there's anybody that wants prayer, please come forward. Whatever it is, if you're needing prayer, quickly come forward. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, is it only Simone that needs prayer? If I can just ask her, Asha's uh, guys to maybe come, Simone, if you'll just come stand forward, yeah? Thank you, my dear. What? Oh,
I'm going to allow Yael just to carry on praying, and but we're going to close the service. I realize the time is coming on. Just want to say thank you, everybody, for your patience. And you know, if you're sitting like this, the best thing to do is pray for the people who are in the front. Imagine they were your family, because they are your family. And just pray for them that God would heal and do. Anyway, God did a one, wonderful thing. He is healing. He's doing a miracles here. It's absolutely wonderful what God is doing. We're so grateful. I'm so grateful to God for being so kind to us and for letting us experience His presence. We are, we are privileged people. And so we're going to have coffee and tea and stuff. And really want to encourage you to stick around and join us and have some fellowship with us. We love you guys more than you can imagine. Have a beautiful day. Father, we just pray blessing and favor and love and peace over all of your children in the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever it is we need from you, Lord, thank you. You said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed with heaven's best in Jesus' name. Amen.